All right, guys. Hey, Alex here with FFM Inc. Uh, so today we're out here on the range, but uh, after doing some gun videos, I figured that uh, might be a decent time to talk about a couple of things I said on my video, five things I would never do as a professional firearms instructor. Uh, a couple of the comments I was getting was, um, I didn't get kicked back on anything, but two of them really. Uh, one of them was about storing a firearm loaded and the second one was about open carry. So let me talk about storing a firearm loaded first. So the, the rule of thumb is always store firearms so they are inaccessible to unauthorized persons. Okay, so whatever that means to you, it means to you. Um, as a matter of general discussion, uh, I once had a student who said, um, well, you know, I'm the tallest one in the house, so I keep my guns on the top shelf in the closet. I said to him, well, you know what? You got kids? I said, yes, I got kids. I said, well, they can grab a chair, they can grab a step ladder, step stool, whatever, they can get to them. So the fact that you're putting them up higher doesn't really make them inaccessible to unauthorized persons. We're talking about, you know, a safe, for example. Um, but again, I guess like, you know, if you're a single guy and you live home alone, like we got one instructor in particular who, you know, he's a single guy, lives alone, father just passed away, he's the only one in his house, lives in a rural place. But, you know, even if he was to leave his firearms like out in a drawer or something, or randomly placed throughout the house, um, you know, that still would make them inaccessible to unauthorized persons if someone breaks in. Um, because they're accessible so that's what I mean about never store firearm loaded the second thing to that is there's different uh, phases of loading I guess so for example the NRA which depending on the situation I, I can agree I can disagree with them but they say basically whenever ammunition is introduced into the firearm, it's considered loaded. So in other words, whenever a cartridge is loaded into a revolver cylinder, it's considered loaded, whether the cylinder is open or closed. Um, with a semi-automatic pistol or a rifle, as soon as the magazine or the clip is inserted into the firearm, and assuming that clip or magazine is loaded with a live cartridge, then it is considered loaded. Now, in... I shouldn't say the, the real world, but in reality, if the gun can't go boom, one could really have a good argument that it's not loaded, okay? Um, I guess it would be no different than, well, I guess it is kind of different than a nail gun, because with a nail gun, once you load the nails, it's ready to go. As soon as you squeeze the trigger, see, a firearm's not like that. It, it has to be chambered. So... If it's not chambered, then maybe there's times it's permissible to leave the gun loaded. But I will say this. This is how I'll wrap it up as far as storing a loaded gun. If you're storing a gun with one in the chamber, that's stupid. And you can never, ever argue otherwise. Because there's no reason for it. Because, again, it's being stored. So it's not in use. So why is it loaded with one in the chamber if it's not in use? And in use is defined as immediate access. So the farthest the gun could possibly be from you to be considered immediate access is your glove box if you are in the passenger or the driver's seat. That's it. Any farther away, it's not immediate access. So it doesn't mean while well, you're sleeping in your nightstand drawer, because you're sleeping, you can't have immediate access. Okay? So again, just general firearm safety rules, always store guns and ammo separately and also store guns and ammo so they are inaccessible to unauthorized persons. Those are just not debatable rules. Second thing is uh, not really a rule, okay? So why I would never open carry. First of all, I would never open carry because I don't want to be the first one singled out, especially if I'm in public. That's funny because someone commented on a video about this and was like, well, I do want to be the first target so I can protect my family. And, and that, that to me as a professional, that, that just sounds backwards. You don't want to be a target. You don't want to have a target on your back. Let me give you a quick example. You are standing in line at the gas station waiting to pay for your gas or 
you just, I don't know, bought a slice of pizza or you get bought a coffee, whatever. And you drop something, you bend down to pick it up, you're open carrying, you got some nutcase behind you and they take the gun out of your holster. I mean, you're not even going to have any time to react to that because their, their hand's going to be on your gun as you're bending down and they're probably going to get your gun, uh, depending on what kind of holster you have. My, my point is, if you're concealed carrying, then that nut job behind you doesn't even know you have a gun. So, you know, it's almost like when I, when personally, when I see people walking around open carrying, and I'm not talking about security and law enforcement, I'm talking about civilians, okay? Like Walmart, for example. I think to myself, why are you open carrying? It's like, hey world, look at me. I have a gun. To me, that is the most ass backwards way to look at it. You want to be the totally opposite other way. You don't want anyone to know that you have a firearm. Um, it really puts you at a disadvantage when someone knows you have a gun. So, obviously, like, all my friends and my family and people close to me know that I'm always carrying a gun. And, you know, some of them don't agree with it. You know, like, oh, what do you need a gun when you go to the grocery store for? I don't know. Well, just Google the news. I'm going to get shot in the grocery store. And I'm not saying that I would have been able to stop it or I wouldn't have been shot. I, I, but I'm saying at least, like, I want to give myself a fighting chance. So I don't want to be a target. That, that's kind of the number one thing. The second thing is kind of related to the first thing, but not like a, a human target to like be attacked, but a target in the sense that um, you're getting noticed. Um, there's, uh, <laughs> there's good and bad press, right? So the same thing goes when you're carrying a firearm. Again, when you go into a public place, especially like a bank, for example, okay, that, you know, because like here in Virginia, like you, you carry in a bank, it's, it's not illegal. But there's a huge difference between concealed carrying into a bank and open carrying into a bank. Like, I would never, I just never open carry in general, but I never just open carry into a bank, especially, because that, that would just create problems. So, uh, yeah, you know, you guys should comment on this video. And if, you would, if you're an open carrier, here's my question to you. Because I have a plethora of reasons why I concealed carry. And I just mentioned a couple of them. But why do you open carry? as opposed to concealed carrying. And, and and don't tell me because it's a faster draw, because that's a crock of shit. It's not. It's not a faster draw at all. Because if you're practicing from concealment, it's not going to be a faster draw. Uh, and another thing I hear a lot from students is, oh, you know, I have um, four, five, six different carry guns, and they, they try, I guess, I don't know, be cool. And I got like, you know, seven different holsters. Well, that's stupid, because you need to become proficient and everything that you carry. So unless you're proficient in those six or seven different firearms and holsters, excuse me, in those holsters that you have, what are you doing it for? You don't need a different gun for every day of the week. That's not, that's not how this works. And again, proficiency is key. So, you know, keeping the same thing, that kind of goes another thing. I'd never use a nylon holster. Nylon holsters don't properly retain the firearm. And it's just anybody who uses nylon, hol there, there's, there's really no good professional out there in the industry that's going to use a nylon holster to carry a handgun. I mean, that's just hand down. And I'm not necessarily talking about like a belly band. I'm talking about those cheap nylon holsters for nine, 10 bucks at Walmart. You know, the ones that like hang off your hip with like a Velcro strap. That, that, that's, that's cheap and dangerous really. Um, so again, concealed carry is the way to go. And mainly I'll leave you with this. In my opinion, it's because of the way the world is now. Okay. So obviously this place you can't legally carry a firearm, okay? But for example, if, uh, you know, let's say my nephew has a football game or whatever and he's nine years old and I go to the football game, I don't want to be standing on the sidelines with a gun on my hip because that's inappropriate. It's just inappropriate. You can't say, oh, well, I'm exercising my Second Amendment right. No, you're exercising your right to be stupid, okay? You should be concealed carrying or not carrying at all. It does. There, I'm not saying there's not a place for a handgun at a kid's football game because I definitely believe that there is. But there's not a place at a kid's football game to be open carrying a gun, okay? Because, again, that's like saying, hey, everybody, look, I have a gun. So, in my opinion, it's like most people who open carry a firearm, either it's because they can't obtain a concealed handgun permit, A, or B, it's because they want to be noticed. And both of those things are, are detrimental to you, your safety, and your family's safety. Be sure to like and uh, hit the subscribe button.